right, eight. Okay, so we've got a punch here. And again, it looks like the action's in the dermis. So it's starting to look a little kind of patchy throughout the dermis. And when I see that at this power, I start thinking that this is maybe a vasculocentric process. Yeah. And you can see vessels kind of scattered throughout these areas. Um, and here now we're starting to get more of a suggestion of some fibrosis around the vessel. Yeah, very good. And it does look like we've got some fibrin, maybe some carioraxis, so like a vasculitic type process. And then we've got an onion skinning fibrosis. We need to know location on this one, but I didn't see like a nexal structure, it's just, just face. So um, fibrin were probably somewhere else, maybe leg. Um, so this could be erythema elevatum diutinum. Very nice, yes. So this is um, EED, and I think you're right that we do have to take the context into account here. From low power, my first thought was really severe vascular stasis, like acroangiodermatitis, because that's like a million times more common than EED. Um, and bad stasis can sometimes look like this, where you get like uh, lobules or little nodules multifocal in the papillary dermis with a lot of sclerotic, scarring, fibrotic background, right? But when we look closer here, what we see is that the vessels here, even though the vessels look a little bit like stasis vessels, they've got a lot of neutrophils around them and they have um, some, some nuclear dust and some fibrin. So it seems like there really is vasculitic change here. And then in addition to that, there is a lot of kind of swirled onion skin fibrosis or scarring around each of these nodules of vasculitic um, small blood vessels. And eventually over time, as that scarring and vasculitis progresses, it forms kind of in large uh, thickened plaques or nodules. Uh, I've only seen um, erythema elevatum diutinum a few times, but as you guys know, it is a form of, of fibrosing vasculitis. It has some overlapping features with um, granuloma facial, uh, although uh, this tends to have more vasculitis and more fibrosis and kind of less dense sheet-like inflammation. Um, and clinically, they, they seem to be a bit different too, but there are some, sometimes you can have overlap and, and um, have cases that have a little bit of features of one or the other uh, in them. So it does have to be made in the, the context to make, that it makes sense clinically. Um, yeah, this is something I, I've only seen or suggested just a few times in my, you know, a decade of practice. Really, really uncommon. And I've seen one case clinically when I was in fellowship, they had like a uh, an educational uh, seminar where patients with rare diseases came in so that everyone could examine them and learn from them. And one of the patients had EED. So I got the, the really rare opportunity to see this up close. In real life, the other thing to think of if you see a, uh, this is the fact that stasis can sometimes get a little bit of vasculitis around it, particularly if it's ulcerated. So in ulcerated lower leg severe stasis, is not super surprising to see a little bit of vascular damage and neutrophils around vessels. So that's why we do have to you know, make sure that it makes sense clinically to be EED. And I have a couple videos about vasculitis that kind of delve more deeply into that, and including one which shows a more robust, uh, well-developed nodular example of, uh, of EED. So you can go check that out. I'll put a link uh, down below, or you can check on my Kiko index. Sometimes I forget to go back and put the links. Oh yeah, here's the fibrin. So you can see, um, and I wanted to bring this up because this is a good contrast. People often struggle with the what's the pink smudgy stuff in pathology. There's lots of things that are just pink, hypocellular, and telling them apart sometimes is really important, um, but it's ch challenging to do. But here is the fibrin up here around this damaged vessel with neutrophils embedded in it. It's brighter red, it's more smudgy, and then this is collagen here, the collagen of the fibrosis. And you can see individual little strands, little tiny threads of collagen, and the, the texture is different. I know it's a subtlety. The color's a little different, fibrin, and then down here, collagen. Um, and you can use things like trichrome to kind of help you sort that out if you're struggling. With practice, you can do this on H&E. But if you struggle with the pink smudgy stuff, it is hard. And multiple people have asked me to make videos about that. And I've, I've drugged my feet because I know it's hard and I'm struggling to find the best ways to explain it to people. But I'm going to try to put that on my to-do list.